Today, I'm going to be doing a quick little tutorial on how to clone virtual machines in a vSphere client. Uh, this seems pretty simple. In VMware Workstation, it is pretty simple. But this is not VMware Workstation. Uh, the issue you run into here when you try to do this is if you search up on um, VMware's official documentation, um, here's what you'll find. Let's just get this up here. Cloning a virtual machine in a vSphere client. Right, this is exactly what I want. Here's the thing. You must be connected to a vCenter server in order to clone. You can't clone if you're directly connected to an ESXi host. Now, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I only connect directly to my host. This is a vSphere client. This server has never been connected to any vCenter server. I've always connected directly. And I don't have a license for vCenter, so this is my only way of connecting. And uh, I want to clone VMs too, right? I mean, I, I have to have nine VMs here, and they're all going to be the same. So I don't want to make them one by one. And they take about two hours each if I do them one by one. I have done that before. I've set up a number of servers this way. And I don't want to do that. Uh, I should mention that this method will clone VMs exactly. So if you don't want your VM cloned exactly and you would rather um, change it a little bit. Uh, so like, I mean, look, so if you go to settings, there are some things you can change. I mean, I can change my memory and my CPUs and things like that. I can't change the size of my drive. I can't change a number of other things. But, you know, obviously, once you make your new VM here, it will be independent. I mean, you can uh, change its settings that aren't permanent, like drive size. But other than that, it's permanent, like I said. So let's get right into it. This is pretty simple. So the first thing you want to do is open your data store. Assuming you have one VM created here, you know what that is, and you can just jump right in. You just want to right click and browse your data store. Here's mine. Go to the VM you want to clone. In my case, all of these are the same, uh, but we'll just head to the first one. And what you want to do is the following. Copy the .vmx file, the .vmdk file, the nvram and both of these okay vmxf and vmsd not the log the log is not important for this because it'll create its own log once you uh once you create the new version all you want to do is go to copy head back to the parent folder create a new one with the name of your new virtual machine go into it and hit paste now just as you would expect for these VMs are 24 gigabytes, just as you'd expect for 24 gigabytes on your host PC, this is going to take a while. It says one second remaining, but that is not that is not accurate at all. Um, so it does take a while. I will let you know how long it takes. It's 5.33 right now. I'm going to pause and be right back when it's done. Okay, all done. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention is that... Uh, well, I didn't forget to mention, I, I, I just just forgot, uh, that these, I believe, are not needed, but they don't really take up any space, and it's going to make them by itself anyway, uh, once you start it up for the first time, um, the clone VM, that is. Uh, so I copy them. You don't really need to. Uh, okay, so yeah, it's finished copying. Uh, I like to rename the files, uh, just personal preference, it's easier to... Uh, manage later on just go through and do it uh, one thing you should know is that the virtual disk here which is evident by the enormous file size uh, cannot be renamed uh, it they say I forget they gives you a message when you try to do it it says has not been implemented yet or or something of that nature um, so but it, I mean it doesn't actually really matter um, another thing that I uh, wanted to mention is that that took let's see uh, took about nine minutes, maybe ten minutes. Uh, that's kind of a lot of time for twenty gigabytes. But you should remember, just quickly look at my CPU here. Uh, I'm running dual uh, E5520 uh, Xeon CPUs, very old CPUs at 2.27 gigahertz. So you know you can you can compare that to your CPU, and it could be faster or slower uh, based on that. So once that's done. You want to find the VMX file. It's going to be about 3 kilobytes. In most of the tests I've done, they always end up about 3 kilobytes. This basically has all the settings and all the things you need that are important for your VM. And you just want to right-click it and add to inventory. And you can do your name, 
which since I've just renamed it is, is already the name I want. Um, and then choose the server you want to uh, 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 add it to. Uh, even though I am currently, as you can see here, connected to two servers, uh, there's only the one shows up. So I don't think there's ever anything, any other option here. Um, and then ready to complete, just hit finish. We can close out of the data store now. And here it is. We're going to boot it up and turn it on. And it's going to ask you, did you move it or copy it? I copied it is important to say. I mean, I don't actually, I don't know how important it is. I'm going to boot up the original one too, just for comparison. Okay, so we're going to boot it up here. Make sure everything goes smoothly. All right. Uh, if we go back to the original one that I copied here, it's all good to go at this point. And uh, this still works fully operational. And is also fully operational. Everything worked cor correctly, and both still work fine. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to comment them down below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.